All right, all right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, this is Jay, host of the Technical File Podcast and host of the SJP Files, brought to you by Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and any other podcast you listen to. You can make money from your podcast, no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Once again, download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. All right, all right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Technical Fall Podcast. I am your host, Jay, and today is July 7th, 2021, the day after, essentially, the 2021 NBA Finals Game 1 between the Milwaukee Bucks and the Phoenix Suns. Now, I was going to do a a preview of this series yesterday, but I woke up kind of late. And I had to go to work, so I didn't just I just didn't have time to record an episode yesterday. And by the time I got home, the game was about to start, and I was starving, so I just ordered a pizza, watched the game. Great game, beautiful game from the Bucks and the Suns, especially the Suns. The Suns were fantastic all night long. I mean, it, the first quarter was low hit and miss for both teams. Devin Booker was fantastic in the first quarter, 12 points. Six free throws, three for six from the field. DeAndre Eaton, another guy, six points, four rebounds, uh, uh, three for three from the field. Chris Paul, like 0 for 2. I think, excuse me, I'm trying to remember. I think Chris Paul started like 1 for, I want to say like 1 for 7 in this game. I want to say something like that because he had to, he had to have missed like his first four shots or something like that. He had to have missed like his first four shots. I can't remember implicitly but yeah i'm pretty sure he missed like his first four shots but that doesn't really matter because like i said first quarter pretty even 26 to 30 milwaukee up no i mean phoenix up 30 to 26 first quarter it took like i felt like it took phoenix a while a little bit to kind of get into like a little a little bit of a rhythm and as for Milwaukee, I mean, I was not expecting Giannis to play this game. I'm, I mean, on like my outro of the Eastern Conference Finals, I figured Giannis was going to mix. I know he was. I knew he was doubtful for Game One. I thought he was going to miss Game One until I saw like actual, until like almost like right before the game, I checked my phone and I realized, holy shit, Giannis is playing. He's up. He's playing tonight. And I didn't expect to see much from him. I expected him to be good, not great. And he was good. He was very, very good. I think his total for the game was like 20.17 rebounds, I want to say. Yeah, 20, yeah 20.17 rebounds, uh, four assists, two steals, a block. And that block was a fantastic chase down LeBron in his prime type chase down block on, what was his name, Mikael Bridges. He was he just like glided down the court like a just like a gazelle just taking nice long strides on like the Serengeti or some shit. And he just caught up to Chris Middleton and he didn't really even jump that high. You know, like LeBron used to do those chase down blocks where he where his head used to damn near hit the rim. Or he had to like duck on his way down so his head didn't hit like the bottom of the backboard. Giannis didn't have to do that. He jumped, he like barely jumped. Pinned it against the black backboard, and that was it. As for Giannis's like whole game, he played 35 minutes. He was not as he was tentative, and I think there were like two reasons for that. One, I felt like his, I felt like he was tentative a because of the injury, and b because I think he saw the way his team played without him, the way guys like Drew Holiday and Chris Middleton played without him. 
and it was kind of a okay let me see if you saw the way the ball was moving all right let me see if i can just kind of come in and fit into the offense without like becoming the offense without having consistently going downhill and the ball consistently in my hands let me see if you know i'm not 100 percent right now let me see if these if we can keep this you know there's this move the ball offense where Chris and Drew handle the bulk of the scoring and I do some of the dirty work. I get the rebounds, you know, some assists, some blocks. I get a couple jump shots on my own. He was one for two from three, seven for 12 from the free throw line. Not great from the line, but passable, especially in, in the finals. He's not a great shooter anyway. So him shooting, him shooting 58% is great. Well, not great. It's adequate. It's adequate. If Ben Simmons was shooting fifty eight percent from the free th- from th- uh, from the free throw line, we'd all have a fucking parade. But doesn't matter. Uh, now one thing the Bucks will have to do in Game Two is adjust, and those adjustments are two guys: Brooke Lopez and Bobby Portis. I like Bobby Portis; very good defender. I like Brooke Lopez. Had a fantastic, what was the game? I want to say game five, where he dropped like 33 points in the Atlanta series. Fantastic big man. I didn't think he had that type of game in him. And in this game, he had 17 points. He was seven for 14 from the field, three for five from the three-point line. He had six rebounds, an assist, uh, a steal. He had five offensive rebounds in this game. He played really good. Played really well. The problem was... They were hunting him. Chris Paul and and uh, Devin Booker were hunting, were hunting him all game, especially in the second quarter. Especially in the second quarter, man. They were. It was. It's. It's like you see like the highlights for this game, and pretty much every basket that Chris Paul. And Devin Burker score. Actually, it's not even just the second quarter. Like the later half of the first quarter and pretty much the entire second quarter that he was in the game. When he was on the court, they were hunting him. Like I said, pretty much every jump shot you see in the highlights that Chris Paul or Devin Booker hit, especially Chris Paul, Brooke Lopez was the guy guarding him. Brooke Lopez was the dude guarding him. And Chris Paul would put Brooke Lopez in like the torture chamber. He, you know, hitting step backs, hitting fadeaway, mid-range, and the, the pick and roll was fantastic again tonight. Chris Paul, like, there's a reason we call him the point god. He's a he's amazing in the pick and roll. He himself had well, what was it? 30, what was it, 33 points, 32 points, nine rebounds, 12 for 19 from the field, four for seven from three. He had all his free throws, but that's not surprising. DeAndre Ayton had 22 points. Devin Booker had 27 points. Didn't have a great shooting night. He was only one for eight from the three from the three point line. He hit that three in I want to say like the third or fourth quarter, and eight for 21 from the field. Didn't have a great shooting night. Neither did Mikel Bridges. He was five for 13 from the field. Jay Crowder 0 for eight, 0 for five from the three point line. But Cameron Payne gave you some minutes. Tory Craig good minutes. Cameron Johnson off the bench. Good minutes. Dario Saric, he got hurt early in the game. He only played like two minutes. Uh, I was, I think it was like an ankle injury. I don't remember. I don't exactly remember what happened, but he got hurt early in that game. And like I said, Chris Paul, you could tell he was he's hungry for that first championship. He wants it more than I think anybody else on this court wants it. And DeAndre Ayton has, without question, he had 22.7. He had 22 points, 19 rebounds. You almost had two guys in this game go for 20 and 20. Giannis was three rebounds short, and Aiton was one rebound short of of both those guys going 20 for 20. Not 20 for 20, 20 and 20. But Aiton, fantastic. Here's the thing that I think a lot of people don't notice about Aiton or maybe don't like conceptualize about Aiton. I'm not even sure that's the right word. But the thing about Aiton is he has he he doesn't get a lot of post ups. Like I say, eight for ten, got ten shots. Does not get a lot of post up, but he's always around the rim. He has fantastic hands around the rim. So 
incredible touch. Incredible touch. He's not one of those guys who's consistently going to go in there and just like bang on you. He's not one of those dudes who's just going to rise up and, and just like throw it down and put you on a poster. But when he goes to the rim, you can see on one of the fast breaks, he comes in. He, he could have dunked that ball. I think he could have dunked that ball, but just lays it up. A lot of the, a lot of the alley oops he caught were just, just like him, kind of just like tapping it in. It wasn't like you know, like one of those Zion alley oops where he like hangs on the rim. One, one of those. It's just boom, catch in the basket, keep it pushing. Incredibly professional. And I heard what he said after the. After the Clipper series that Chris Paul, I was in the Clipper series. It might have been after the Clipper series. I don't remember. But I remember what he said. Chris Paul is the best thing to happen to him. And I think he's right. And he's not like one of these guys who just, who A, who, who, who A, can't defend or B, can't shoot. He's not one of those setters. He is not like Rudy Gobert. He is not like Rudy Gobert. He's quick enough to Def, to defend on switches he's not a great perimeter defender but he's adequate enough that you don't hunt him like he's laterally quick enough his feet he's got good enough footwork that you're not that guys are not consistently hunting him on the uh, on the defensive end or on the offensive end depending on who's on depending on who, the other when the other team's on offense they're not hunting him they're just they're not hunting him because he's a good enough perimeter defender not a great one but he's a good enough perimeter defender to make your shot difficult. Unlike, like, like I said, unlike Brooke Lopez, Brooke Lopez is not laterally quick enough to give Chris Paul and Devin Booker real headaches when he's guarding them on the perimeter. Those guys are so skilled, especially Chris Paul in the mid range. And Chris, like I said, Chris Paul, fantastic with the pick and roll. Chris, Always, he always does this weird thing. It's not even he. I'm pretty sure he's the only player in the NBA who does it. He'll hit you with like he'll call for a screen, get the center on you. He'll like almost kind of like blow past his guy, and while the big man is right there, right in front of him, and instead of heading to the rim, he'll like curve off just outside the restricted area and pull up for like a fadeaway, like a fadeaway mid range. And he'll either hit it off the backboard or hit nothing but net. And he does this consistently, and he's so good at it. He is so good at it. And I know people, like the last couple of years, were talking about the mid-range is dead. The mid-range has never been dead. The mid-range has never, for the best players in the NBA, for the best scorers in the NBA, for the majority of those guys, the mid-range has never been dead. The mid-range has died, has kind of receded when it, can't, when it comes to the role players. The role players are a lot more three and D. Like PJ Tucker ain't taking a lot of mid-range shots. PJ P- Tucker, you know, Bobby Porters, Bryn Forbes, uh, Jeff T, Pat Connaughton. Those guys don't take a lot of mid, those guys don't really take mid-range shots. Same thing with like Cameron Johnson and Campaign and uh, uh Tory Craig, like Jalen Smith. Those guys don't take a lot of mid-range jump shots. Those guys take a lot of threes. Or they're they're either taking threes or they're at the rim on cuts and stuff like that but like the guys like booker and paul and holiday and middleton those guys take mid-range shots because they're skilled enough to score in the mid-range it's not it's not even a it's not remotely a thing that the mid-range has died the stars the best players in the league the best scorers in the league are mid-range scorers they can all score in the mid range. It's just like most highlights hit you with the, unless it's like in the fourth quarter where it's like clutch time, most of the highlights hit you with the dunks or the layups or like the logo threes. So people think the mid range is dying. The mid range is not dying, will never die. As long as you have great players in the league, the mid range will never die. Now, where was I? Back on this game. Yes. Uh, like I said, DeAndre Ayton, fantastic hands around the rim. Devin Booker, proving he is a superstar level player. He's moving himself in to the, to, to the I want to say, the upper echelon of top shooting guards in this league. I think he always had the talent. He just didn't have the moments that make you go, this dude is for real. 
And I know a couple weeks ago, people were calling him Baby Kobe. I was like, whoa, whoa, pump the brakes. Pump the brakes. And I heard somebody ask, was it, it might have been on Twitter last night. I don't know who it was. But somebody asked, is with a championship, is Devin Booker become like a top five all-time shooting guard? No. No. There's got to be like, there's got to be like 15 guys ahead of him. He may have that type of talent. But there's got to be like 15 guys ahead of him. So no, he's not an all-time guy yet. That's a conversation you have like seven years from now when he's been in the playoffs consistently, when he's maybe got a ring or two. And to be in that top five shooting guard conversation, you got to have at least one championship and at least one finals MVP. A regular season MVP helps tremendously. I don't know if Booker, Booker will ever be to the level where he gets a regular season MVP next year. He'll probably, as long as he has uh, a season similar to what he had this year in the regular season, because this year, what was his score? 25 points, four rebounds, four assists. He's got to up those numbers if he wants to be in that MVP conversation. He played fantastic this year. He's all, Devin Booker's always been a really, really good player. He's, He's been averaging 20 points basically since his sophomore season in the league. It's just that his teams were all bad. And his owner's cheap as hell. Doesn't really want to spend money. Well, if they win a championship this year, you're going to have to spend some money, my guy. You had to spend some money to keep Chris Paul. Chris Paul deserves this, like, this spotlight he's getting. And I, for me, I'm so happy for Chris Paul because for the first time in his career, I think, like, the general, like, general basketball fans are getting a chance to see just how good this guy really is. He has been so good for so long. Been the best point guard in the league. I mean, like, pure point guard in the league for for probably the last 10 to 12 years. He's been the best pure point guard in the league. He's an old school pure point guard. He scores when necessary. He's av- Chris Paul has only averaged 20 points in his career twice. That's his third year and his fourth year, both in New Orleans. When he was with the Clippers, the most he ever averaged was about 19 and a half. In Houston, his first year, he averaged 18. In Oklahoma City, last year, he averaged 17. This year, he averaged 16 points, 9 assists. He's averaged double-digit assists. What was it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times. Average double digits assists six times, came close. He averaged 9.8, which is essentially 10 assists. 9.7, another two times. That's basically like, yeah, he basically averaged it like eight times in like his 16 year career. Fantastic. But he's going to go down, if he, especially if he wins this championship, he's going to go down probably as one of the five best point guards ever. He probably slides probably Gary Payton off that list. Probably slides uh, GP off that list. I love the glove, but Chris Paul, man, come on. And this is, and to the Bucks, this is the Drew Holiday game I was kind of expecting in the, in the East, in the Eastern Conference Finals. The last two games where Giannis didn't play. First for four, four for 14, 10 points. He did have nine assists and seven rebounds. He missed four threes, but still. Four for 14 from the field. Like I said, I know what I'm going to get night in, night out from the Phoenix Suns big three. I know what I'm going to get. I know I'm going to get a great game from Chris Paul. Now, whether Chris Paul scores 32 or Chris Paul scores 15, he's going to play well. Is it going to be 32 and 9 like it was in game one? Or is it going to be 15 and 12? Which is probably more something that's going to happen. I know DeAndre Ayton's going to give me somewhere between 15 and 25 points. Somewhere in that range. And know he's going to give me somewhere between 10 to 15 rebounds, give or take. 
I know Devin Booker is going to give me 20 plus points every single night. He may not have a great shooting night like he did tonight, like he did tonight, but I know he's going to be aggressive. He had 10 free throws. I know he's going to get to the line. I know he's going to give me at least 20 to 20. I know he's going to give me somewhere between 20 and 30 points every single game. Giannis, same thing. I pretty much know what I'm going to get from Giannis. I'm going to get somewhere around 30 points and 15 rebounds. Now, today it was 20 and 17, but I'm going to get around 30 points, 15 rebounds. The real question for this series is which Drew Holiday and Chris Middleton are going to show up? Is it going to be this game Chris Middleton shows up and Drew Holiday doesn't? Or is it going to be Drew Holiday shows up next game and Chris Middleton doesn't? That's the issue. That's my issue with the Milwaukee Bucks. And second, what are you going to do with Brooke Lopez? Because Chris Paul and Devin Booker are going to be hunting him all series. Are you going to put Bobby Portis in there? Because Bobby Portis is the only guy you can put in there. What are you going to put? Tiannis into the compo? That's No, that's not going to happen. Tanasis, I think his name is, not Tiana, sorry. Tanasis Antetokounmpo, Giannis is, what is it, Giannis' is older brother or is his younger brother? I forget. Because Tiannis, Tanasis is 28, so I'm pretty sure he's, yeah, he's Giannis' older brother, because Giannis is 26. And Giannis' younger brother, I believe, plays for the Lakers. Yeah. Second round, NBA debut in the 20, damn, he was picked in the 2014 draft? Doesn't matter. Sorry, I got I get distracted sometimes. My bad. My bad. My bad. But yeah, you got to make some adjustments. Uh, the adjustment I would make would maybe put Giannis at the four. I would try and put Giannis at the five, but I don't know if I want Giannis in the middle with DeAndre Ayton all game. Or maybe on defense you could switch him up. Put Bobby Portis on. You can put Portis on, but then again, if you put Portis on him, yeah, wherever Portis is on the court, whether it's Portis or Booker, wherever they are on the court, that's who Chris Paul is going to be calling for a screen. So it doesn't really matter. I don't think it really matters because Chris Paul blew by Bobby Portis a couple times in his game. Blew by him. Devin, I mean, Bobby Portis, Brooke Lopez. I think you're looking at two very, very, Two very, very good, well-coached teams. I think the Phoenix Suns are a better team. I think they're a more well-coached team. I think they're the, they're definitely the healthier team. Chris Paul did have a bit of a scare when he hit that jump shot in, what was that, at three in Brooke Lopez's face and came down a little awkward on that ankle. Had me worried for a second, but thank God he's okay. But with games like these, Chris Paul is most likely going to get that four-year deal he might want, which scares the hell out of me. Because at the because the last like two years of that deal are going to be murder on the Phoenix Suns, but it is what it is. Maybe you get maybe you could buy Chris out at the time. Hopefully, maybe you could buy Chris out if he's got like you know 30, 40 million dollars left on that contract. Maybe you can buy him out the last two years and free up some caps, some cap space that way. If Chris Paul just like falls off a fucking cliff, but I don't think that's gonna happen. Hopefully, it doesn't happen. But in the second half. The Phoenix Suns took control of this game, especially in the third quarter. They took control of this game. They outscored the Suns by nine in the third quarter, and they were already up by nine. At one point, they were up by like 20. Remember, so yeah, by at one point, yeah, because going into the third quarter, they were up by eight, outscored them by nine. So by the end of the... Sorry, but by the end of the fourth quarter they were pretty by the, going into the fourth quarter they were up by about what 17 at one point they were up by 20 the milwaukee bucks did trim it down to about seven points but the the phoenix suns i don't like i said the phoenix suns will not be denied chris paul gonna get himself a ring this year i've got the suns in six because i think milwaukee gets a couple games in milwaukee and Giannis, like i said they really didn't have much of a they really didn't have a real way to slow Giannis down. I thought I thought the but I thought the Suns played good defense on him, not great defense on him. I mean Dario Saric, Frank Kaminsky, I mean 
who's DeAndre Ayton? I don't want DeAndre Ayton on him 24-7. So the real question is, uh, you're probably going to have Jay Crowder on him most of the time. Jay Crowder and Mikel Bridges are probably going to have to trade off duty on Giannis. They're both going to give Giannis as much as he can handle. Uh, also, Cameron Johnson is going to be one of those guys. Since Giannis is more of a perimeter player than a post player, if he was a post player, you probably have Aiton and Saric try to guard him at all at all times in the paint. But Giannis is pretty much a perimeter player now, so he does have some like little face up post game, but little face up game in a post. But yes, Crowder, Bridges, and Johnson are probably going to be the guys guarding him the majority of this series. As for Pat Connaughton, yeah, that 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 little shit you tried in what was it, the third quarter? That, no, that was a wide open shot. Crowder was in the paint. What the hell are you doing? You know, trying to get to the rim, and I don't even think really Crowder blocked it. I know he got credit for the block. Yeah, I think he, yeah, that was I think that was his one. He got I'm pretty sure he got credit for the block, but I feel like you got blocked by the 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 bottom of the backboard, you bum. But is what it is. Once again, congratulations. Absolutely congratulations to the Phoenix Suns and Chris Paul. <laughs> they were fantastic, and I can't wait to see this series continue to progress as these two teams just keep going at it. I can't wait to see what this what this is next. So uh, we're going to take a short break, and then we'll be back with a little bit of news. A little bit of news. What you know about rolling down in the deep? When your brain goes numb, you can call that mental freeze. When these people talk too much, put that shit in slow motion. Yeah, I feel like an astronaut in the ocean. Ay, what you know about rolling down in the deep? When your brain goes numb, you can call that mental freeze. When these people talk too much, put that shit in slow motion. All right, all right, all right. We are back. Uh, like I say, a couple of news, not really news, but a couple, but some rumors, the XFL and CFL and partnership talks, uh, report on Bleacher Report, why signing Baker Mayfield, why rushing to sign Baker would be a, would, would be a mistake, which I agree. I, I agree. I think I like Baker. I think he's a very good, good, uh, very good quarterback. I don't know if he's like all time yet to the point where I would justify paying him the amount of money you're going to need to pay him for his. Yeah, the NFL is like it's a markets game, and I mean. Because I think, what's his, like, extension? I, th I think he's, I forgot what his actual, you know, extension could be. Because I'm trying to remember where, what his, like, actual, like, let me see what Josh Allen got. What is the Buffalo Bills? And let me shout out to the Cleveland Browns. Uh, love Cleveland. I think, cause I think Allen signed his extension, right? No, he did not. He's making. I think he, did he get franchise? No, he's making like essentially like the what is it? The twenty twenty two season. He'll his base salary is somewhere around like twenty three million. No, his base salary is like twenty three million dollars. Fucking ridiculous. For jo I like Josh Allen, but come on, man, that much money. Bugging. Absolutely bugging. Shot to yeah, move over to Baker. Same thing. Baker's cap hit this year is like 18. He's uh yeah, they exercise his fifth year option. So yeah, his fifth year option is like what 18 million. His base salary is 18 million dollars. Same thing with Josh Allen. So I know he's they're both eligible for like big extensions. I'm trying to find out who the hell just got. What the hell just got like a 
stupid extension. Because I cannot remember who just got an extension, and if it doesn't really matter. But that shit is great. Um, I hope. I like. like I said I like Baker. I hope Baker does get his paper. And uh, also, uh, what was it? What's his name? The kill Harry became essentially one of like the first NFL players to ask to request for a trade from the New England Patriots. Uh, what was it? Yeah, it was Nikhil Harry. Uh, first, one of the first dudes to like legitimately request a trade from the New England Patriots. Congratulations. I mean, it's not going, that's not, well, they're going to trade you anyway. Cause yeah, I feel, yeah, they're going to trade you anyway. But I mean, guy, seriously. I mean, the other guys drafted in your, I mean, really? Who the, who the, I like him, but nah. Get your game up, babe. Get your game up, boo boo. Get your game up, because that's not going to happen. You could, like, puff your chest out all you want. You could, you could ask you to get traded, and you have not exactly been, you know, world beater to be able to, you know, puff your chest out and say, like, I want to trade publicly, too. That is very much not the Patriot way. That's bugging, but is what it is. Also, I'm in like the middle of this. Uh, this is not a sports thing, but I'm in the middle of the not even in the middle. I'm like three and a half hours in to a four and a half for to like four hours and 45 minutes of the DJ academics on interview on uh, the flagrant two podcast for Andrew Schultz and Akash Singh. This is like the first time I think I've ever listened to like a like almost a four hour show and I'm still so engaged in it. The only reason I've had to stop is because I've had to, you know, put this episode out and I've also had to do other things like periodically through the game. Last night was the game. So when the commercial breaks would hit, I was listening to the interview and I just just remind myself to pause it because the interview was so interesting. I had to remind myself to pause it so I could like go back to the game and watch the game. Instead of like spending like the four hours just like, you know, watching it. Like I said, this shit was amazing. This shit is amazing. And I can't wait to see it. But uh, there was a video I was watching on YouTube. Hello? Oh, the hell is that? Like a beep. Anybody else hear that? Anyway. Uh. The where was I? Yes, video I heard. Video I was watching on YouTube. It was the uh, it was the Gilbert Arenas, Richard Jefferson, on the uh, No Chill podcast, and the other guy whose name escapes me right now. I can't remember his name right now. He was asking like, who's the best scorer of this generation? And you know, Richard Jefferson said LeBron James. And the other guy kept asking he was like, no, I said I said score. I was like, yeah, LeBron James. I mean, score and not player. It was like, I heard what you said, LeBron James. And I love this. I love this because LeBron James, he is one of the wildest parts of the NBA. LeBron James is not considered a scorer, despite the fact that LeBron James has averaged damn near, has averaged 25 points. As average, like a minimum of 25 points every year of his career for 16 years. Let me give you that one more game. LeBron James has averaged 25 plus points since his second year. What? LeBron James is, let's say, he played 11 years in Cleveland. Four years in Miami is 15 years. Plus another three years, that's 18 years. So not 16, my bad, 17 years. He has averaged at least 20 points. He's averaged 30 points twice in his career. And because he didn't average like, you know, well, Michael Jordan averaged like 35 points in his career for like like eight times. I'm capping. I have no idea what the real number is. The hell's my keyboard? There it is. I'm going to look them up. Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. Give me one second.
Michael Jordan. Kobe Bean Bryant. Also, there's a couple other guys whose stats I just wanted to look up real quick. Because actually, there's one more guy. I just when I saw him on like the thumbnail, but that's not the point. Michael Jordan averaged 30 points in his career. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. Eight times. He averaged it eight times. So everybody just, his career scoring averages like 30 points. So everybody just assumes he played 15 years in the league. So everybody just assumes that he's just such more, a better scorer. Kobe Bryant, he averaged 30 points. What, three times? I want to say, yeah, about three times in his career. Kobe averaged 30, three times. Yo, he's one of like the wildest things. People forget. Quick little sidetrack. Grant Hill was like one of like the crazy dopest guys you've ever seen in your career, especially in his early career. Got drafted in 95, averaged 20 points in his rookie year, averaged 20 points in his second year, 21 his third, 21 his fourth, 20. He averaged 20. Like 26 and a half, yeah, but about 26 points in his last year. This would have been year, what was it, six? This would have been year six in Detroit and then Miami and the whole thing. It's what happened to him is so crazy because all the injuries that he just got hit with, all the ankle injuries that just kind of like robbed him of just, of just his athletic ability. Oh, another like a travesty of, of like NBA justice. What happened to Grant Hill? But we ain't talking about Grant Hill. We talking about LeBron James. And like I said, this thing that just wilded me. LeBron James, has, like I said, averaged 25 plus points for at for 16 straight years. And he's not a scorer. What what like what actual game are you fucking watching? Like what game are you fucking when we talk about the greatest scores of all time, we never Mention his name despite the fact he's going to go down as the M as one of, if not the NBA's all time. I think he's third on the list right now. I want to look it up right now. On I'm on where, where am I? I don't care about seasons, players, scores, drafts, newsletters, full site, menu below. Points leaders. Hold on. Where the hell am I? Got a career. Re I did not want career rebounds. Why the hell am I on career rebounds? I didn't. Yeah. Will Chamberlain, like, NBA, ABA, like the greatest rebounder of all time. Go to the leader index. Records. I don't want individual posts. I want like points ever. I want points ever. Why am I not finding it? Yo, basketball reference sometimes can be like fucking... Could be like real shoddy when it comes to like looking up some shits. That shit irritates the fuck out of him. All time points leader. That's not what I was looking for. I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I'm looking. God damn it. NBA, ABA. Single season career. There it is. Career, where's points? Where's points? Yeah, career points. And yeah, LeBron James is third, just past Kobe Bryant, past Michael Jordan. He's third on the list. I think he's little around, I think he's about a thousand points. I'm trying to remember, I think he's, I'm gonna say 1500 points behind Karl Malone. He'll pass him probably either next year or the year after. He'll pass Karl Malone probably next year. And then he's. Like 3,000 behind Kareem Abdul Jabbar. I don't know if he'll get to Kareem. I, like a couple years ago, before injuries, before the groin injury, it was a foregone conclusion that he was going to pass Kareem Abdul Jabbar with the ankle injury and the shortened seasons of the last two shortened seasons, the bubble shortened season, this year shortened season, coupled with the ankle injury. 
I think he will pass him. I'm just not 100% sure about it anymore. I'm more like 80% sure he'll pass Kareem for the NBA's all-time scoring leader. But nobody considers him a scorer, and it, it boggles my mind. It has always boggled my mind that people consider Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, like Julius Irving, Carmelo Anthony, uh, um, Kevin Durant, just vastly superior scorers to him. And it makes no sense. It makes no sense. It makes absolutely no sense that you consider these guys vastly superior scorers to him. They're, they might be better like Bucky get it. I think Kevin Durant's probably the best pure scorer in NBA history. He might be the best, like, offensively gifted player in NBA history. Kyrie Irving might be the most skilled player in NBA history. But LeBron James is the most complete player to ever play professional basketball. Yeah, I said it. You can boo me all you want. I said it. LeBron James is the most complete player the game has ever seen. And the fact that he doesn't get that respect irritates me so profoundly. So profoundly. But is what it is. LeBron James. You look at playoff stats. LeBron James is what seventy six hundred points, a little over seventy six hundred points. Jordan's at fifty nine hundred points. LeBron James has almost two thousand more points in the playoffs than Michael Jordan. Nobody's going to catch that anytime soon. Nobody's going to come close, honestly. Really, nobody's even going to remotely come close anytime soon because you got to average like thirty points in the playoffs. For like, what, at least 10 years? You got to make the finals how many times? I mean, really think about it. How many times are you going to have to make the finals? To like snatch a ring from LeBron. To like snatch that away from LeBron. How many times are you going to have to make the NBA finals to get that many points? And I wish the world would give him the respect he deserves, but it's never going to happen. It's going to happen. No way it's going to happen. It's going to happen when he's retired. It's going to happen when he's retired. And like 10 years from now, people are going to realize, holy shit, just how dominant was he? That's it for the SJ. For, uh, that's it for the Technical File Podcast. Sorry, I got a little. My bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever, whatever. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is it for this episode of the Technical File Podcast. Once again, we're going to hit you guys one more game uh, after game two, which is not tonight, but tomorrow night on Thursday. So I'll probably put the show up early Friday morning, or I might record late Friday night, like around midnight, but it is what it is. We'll see what happens. Once again, like, subscribe, share the episode wherever you listen to it, you know, post it. Instagram, Twitter, hell, TikTok. I'm not a TikTok guy, but hey, I, I know TikTok is big. So whatever you hear, just you know, like, subscribe, share. See you again.